हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विदित कुमार फ्रॉम डॉक्टर रंगनाथन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ लाइब्रेरी इंफॉर्मेशन साइंस बुंदेलखंड यूनिवर्सिटी झांसी फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन यूजर और यूजर्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन रिट्रीवल सिस्टम्स फ्रॉम पेपर इंफॉर्मेशन स्टोरेज एंड रिट्रीवल फ्रेंड्स द यूजर इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन रिट्रीवल सिस्टम the ultimate aim of an information retrieval system is to connect the user quickly and efficiently to the proper information user is the last link of the recipient of information also known as end user in many in in the text of epg patshala you might have seen the term end user so end user is the last link or or the recipient of the information there are other terms used to represent the concept of user such as patron client member customer etc in the context of information retrieval the term user is employed to represents the seekers of information the person who is actively seeking access to information and who when successful obtains and uses the information is described as user sometimes user is referred as searcher also for an information retrieval system to be effective and efficient it is very necessary to understand who are the users what are their needs and of what is the nature of their needs how they seek the required information what is the use pattern they exhibit in using the information in this module we will discuss about the various aspects of users their categories and nature the concept of information need types of information needs and more specifically more specific information needs in different areas of activities the information seeking behavior of users in order to satisfy their information needs what they exhibit we will also trying try to understand the various methods generally known as user studies carried out to find the pattern of overall interaction of user with the information retrieval system let us discuss the different types of users these types are based on kind of activities performed by the user first kind is researchers in the basic and applied sciences second kind is practitioners and technicians engaged in developmental and operational activities in the various field of technology and industry for example agriculture medicine industrial production communication etc third is managers planners and other decision makers who are engaged in developmental activities in both private and public sector so basically the uh, on the basis of the activities divided the users in three types researchers practitioners and managers or planners the next type of the division is based on the characteristics first is by nature of work like engineers scientists policy makers researchers planners managers persons in different professions etc second is the psychological criteria on which we can divide the users on the basis in different categories such as users with superiority complex with inferiority complex selfish users abnormal normal etc third we can divide the nature of activities like study research specialization level of education and responsibility etc user functions in any information retrieval system there are several functions performed by the user the functions include the sequence of activities performed by users to access the information such as searching browsing selecting and evaluating the information objects of their interest user function also includes activities related to obtain and use the information object once the access seeking is successful let us define what is information need in order to have a user oriented system it is imperative to focus the attention to user 
and his information needs. The accurate assessment of information needs of users form the primary basis of all information activities. Before looking at the types of information needs, it becomes necessary to understand the concept of information need. Information need comprises of two terms, information and need. It may be defined as need for information. Information need is a factual situation in which there exists an inseparable interconnection between information and need. It is also to be understood that the information need exists objectively, that is, they are oriented towards reality, practice and task. To have a true perspective of information need, the dictionary meaning of the term need and other closely related terms such as requirement, want, demand should be analyzed. Before moving to these terms, uh, I would like to draw your attention toward N.J. Belkin. N.J. Belkin proposed the concept of anomalous state of knowledge, in short popularly known as ASK, A-S-K, hypothesizing that the information need arises from the recognized anomaly in the user's state of knowledge concerning some topic or situation and that, in general, the user is unable to specify precisely what is needed to resolve that anomaly. So, N.J. Belkin proposed that hypothesize that the information need is a recognized anomaly. Some kind of anomaly exists in the mind of the user about some topic or situation that in general the user is unable to specify precisely what is needed to resolve and how it can be resolved. So, according to Belkin, it is the anomalous state of knowledge of the user where he is unable to specify precisely what is needed. Next attempt was made by Morris B. Line. He attempted to define those these terms in the perspective of information and tried to solve the difficulty of separating the concept of need, want, requirement, demand and use. Morris B. Line defined need, want, requirement and demand, desire, all these terms. Let us first take the term need. Need is what an individual ought to have for his work, his research, his improvement, edification, his recreation, etc. A need is a potential demand. Means a need shows that it can become a demand. Next term is want. What an individual would like to have. Whether or not the want is actually translated into a demand. A want like a need is also a potential demand. Next term is requirement. Morris B. Line defined requirement uh, in the sense that it can mean what is needed, what is demanded and can therefore be usefully employed to cover all three categories. Demand. Demand is what an individual asks for. More precisely a request for an item of information believed to be wanted. When satisfied, the demand may prove not to be want after all. A demand is a potential use. Next is use. Use is what an individual actually uses. A use may be satisfied demand or it may be the result of browsing or accident. Use is a, an indicator of demand, demand of wants, and want of needs. Several attempts have been made. On the similar lines, Taylor has explored the information need from the perspective of psychology of human behavior. According to Taylor, the information need is of four kinds. First is visceral need. Visceral need is an actual but unexpressed need for information. Second is conscious need. Conscious need is an is a need which is an ill-defined area of decision. Next is formal need. Formal need is an area of doubt which may be expressed in concrete terms, which means that in formal need, the user is able to define what kind of need he has. Means the user is aware of what kind of information he wants. 
but in conscious need the he's he's uh, trying to take some decision and he's not aware what kind of information will solve his particular information needs and the last category is compromise need compromise need is a need translated into what the resources and files can deliver compromise needs can be understand understood by on the basis of that the information which the user wants is not actually available but the need has been compromised on the availability of what information is present at the moment types of information needs several other categories of information need exist for example social or pragmatic information need under this category we can put information that is required to cope with day to day life such as weather details of a location bus and train timings etc second recreation information needs this category involves information satisfying the recreational and cultural interests of the users such as the upcoming books tv shows timings etc third is professional information needs the information required to operate complete competently and efficiently within the professional environment of the user this involves information regarding new trends and practices being followed this is the highest demanding information need next is educational information needs in this category the information required to satisfy academic requirement at an institution or to learn new skills are included before moving to details uh, to understand the details about the various information needs in different areas of activities it is worth to understand how to ascertain the information needs of the clientele ms polis atherton listed some methods of ascertaining the information needs first she states that the first step is to study the organizational chart of the institution this helps in understanding the structure of the organization for which the information needs are to be ascertained second is study of its functions activities chart of the organization what are the functions that are performed in that organization what kind of activities that are performed in that organization so such kind of uh, study should be made to ascertain the functions activities on the basis of which the information needs can be realized next step is the study of annual reports project reports and other publications which are pu being published from that organization next is to serve uh, to do a survey of users requirements using some questionnaires so this is another good method to finding what are the requirements of the users which are exist which exist in that particular organization for which the information needs are to be sought or for which the information retrieval system is being developed next step is interviewing users the uh, several interviews can be taken uh, like interview of super superiors of the user like persons which are higher in the hierarchy interviewing the user itself interview of subordinates of the user like persons controlled taught guided by the user these interviews can be personal interviews where the real insights or interactive in, uh, uh, discussion can, can be made to ascertain the information needs next is study of papers books etc published by the user here the uh, books that are published or the papers that are published by the users are studied next attending seminars colloquia etc in which the users participate so by attending the uh, kind of uh, events the user organize uh, is attending it becomes easy to ascertain what kind of information needs are exist for that particular kind of user next is observing user at his workplace this is also a best method to ascertain information needs that is to uh, uh, by observing the user at the time he is working at he or she is working at the workplace next is to find personal information contacts with users some kind of personal information by contacting with user can be sought meeting users in small preferably homogeneous groups periodically that also raises the 
kind of category of information needs that exists. Next is feedback from information services that are rendered. So in every organization, some already existing information services feedback can be obtained so that the information needs could be analyzed. Next is that is providing suggestions from users about their subject interest, author interest, institutional interest, etc. Next, attending technical meetings with the institution at which projects are and problems may be discussed. Next step is scanning correspondence and reports prepared and received by the users. This uh, step helps in ascertaining the communications or correspondence information needs of the user. Next step is study of documents used by the user. What kind of documents the user is using? A study of these documents can give or provide new insights for the development or ascertaining the information needs. Also, the study of reference queries received from the users could also be studied. The participation in work orientation programs. While orienting and guiding users in using libraries, resources, tools and techniques can also be done. The study of classification schemes and handbooks available at the organization also helps in ascertaining the information needs. And lastly, licensing and developing contacts with the user can also help in ascertaining the information needs. Further. We are going to discuss the information needs in some areas of activities. The areas covered are industrial information needs, planning information needs, decision making, research and development information need, information need for business. Industrial information needs. The success of an industry depends on its ability to receive the vital information in time. The information can be in the form of technological information, company oriented information, economic information or information related to policies. However, any new industry in the process of it, its establishment may need the information concerning scope and prospects of the industry, the location, land, machinery and equipment, raw material, utilities transportation, staff and labor, finances, regulations and procedures, market and market strategy. Planning information needs. Planning establishes goals and objectives. This requires large amount of information related to present and past events and situations. Planning also identifies the events and activities that must be performed to achieve the goals. This step also requires considerable amount of information relating to each event and activities. The next step is to describe the resources and or talents necessary to perform the identified activity. The information related to available resources such as individuals who will implement and control the activities is paramount at this step. Next is defining the duration of each identified activity. This requires lot of prior experience and other information about the sub activities. The final step is to determine the sequence in which the identified activities must be performed for best results. Decision making and information needs. Decision making is a process of selecting the most desirable or the optimum alternative to resolve a problem or to attain a goal. Different levels of decision making requires different types of information such as strategic decision making requires strategic information and tactical decision making requires tactical information. Strategic decisions are characteristic by a great deal of uncertainty and are future oriented. It includes activities like establishing policies, policy making, organizing and attaining an overall effectiveness 
for the organization tactical decision making tactical decision making requires tactical information this pertains to short term activities and allocation of resources for the attainment of the objectives at the tactical level of decision making standards are fixed and the results of decisions are deterministic as decision making involves broadly intelligence design of course of action and choice of appropriate course of action the information needs at each stage can be satisfied by information from internal sources prior experiences and the information about the environment where the decisions are going to be implemented so for evaluating the decision making information needs one must consider all these aspects also stop research and development information needs research is the most important activity for any society or industry for its development research attempts to find solution to the problems being faced by a society or an organization it is a very rigorous process and involves processing and use of information to generate new knowledge the generated information at different steps is contained in various documentary forms such as periodicals reports theses conference proceedings review monographs etc the research and development activities involved two activities first basic and fundamental research second applied research and technical development the information needs of researchers involved in our activity of research and development should be satisfied the r&d professionals make use of wide range of information of direct relevance to the topic of research the researchers require information for following purposes to aid in perception or definition of problem to formulate a scientific or technical solution to place work in proper context to relate work slash ongoing research in progress to select design strategy for data collection to select a data gathering technique to design or select equipment or apparatus for conducting a study to enable full interpretation of the collected data to integrate findings into current state of knowledge seeing the above uses of information it can be said the r&d scientists have to be supplied with the adequate information of right order the r&d activity is paramount for the socio economic development of a nation information needs in business any business operates in an environment that consists of economic legal political social and technological factors each factor create need for different types of information needs the information needs vary from very general type of information to more detailed information relating to different aspects of the business some of the information uh, needs can be listed as capital procurement and mobilization technical know how knowledge of existing policies practices and regulations market conditions and requirements foreign trade management information etc the information needs mentioned above if adequately satisfied with the right information the business excels in the above sections we discussed about the information needs and its types and the different information needs that exist in various human activities the moment the information need is realized it becomes important to satisfy this need as already discussed nj belkin ask model proposes that information need is an anomaly that arises in the user's state of knowledge it is but natural for the human mind to fill this anomaly this comes or there comes the concept of information seeking behavior popularly known as isb a prominent name in this field is td wilson td wilson stated information seeking behavior as the attempt of the user in obtaining the needed information results from the recognition of some need perceived by the user in order to satisfy the information needs the user actively undergoes the information seeking process in other words information seeking behavior can be defined as strategies and actions undertaken 
to locate discrete knowledge elements to satisfy the information need. The behavior may take several forms. The user may make demands upon the formal system such as information systems or upon other systems which may perform information functions. The user also seek information from other people through information exchange which involves an element of reciprocity recognized by sociologists as fundamental aspect of human interaction. During the process, failure may be experienced with the system as well from other sources when seeking information. Dissatisfaction after the use of information may lead to generation of new information need. This is T.D. Wilson's proposed information seeking behavior model. On the top, you can see that there is a, an, user, an information user in, which, uh, in whose mind the information need exists. To fulfill that information need, the user performs the information seeking behavior or shows the information seeking behavior. He will try to find the information from other people or he will put the demand upon the information system or demand upon other sources. In the case of failure, he may get the information and he may again show the dissatisfaction and again refine the information needs. Kirja Kumar also proposed the information seeking behavior. According to him, the ISB involves processes such as identifying the objectives, defining needs, accessing information systems, establishing sources of information, information acquisition, use of information, satisfaction or dissatisfaction. So according to Girja Kumar, first the user identifies the objectives. What are the objectives of getting the information? Then he defines his needs. To fulfill the information needs, he tries to he access uh, tries to access the information systems, and est he establishes the sources of various sources of information. On the acquisition of information, the information is filtered, and if it is of use, then it is used, and if the user is Next, the user can be satisfied or he can or she can be dissatisfied. This was the model proposed by Kesha Kumar. Information seeking behavior is concerned with the integrative utilization of three basic resources. First, people, second, information and system. The behavior that yields the highest information satisfaction is the best information seeking behavior. Now, we will discuss what is user studies. User studies can be defined as the studies that are carried out to find the pattern of overall interaction of user with the information retrieval system. For example, how the user is interacting with the system. This involves studying the behavior and information needs of the user in a systematic manner that can help in increasing the efficiency of the system. So the motive of doing the user study is to improve the efficiency of the system. The term user study is mainly concerned with studying information processing activities of users. It es essentially implies the study of the use of the demand or need of information. A study which mainly focuses on users to measure their information needs, use behavior and use pattern. Also for a meaningful service, user study is must. Categories of user studies. Menzel has categorized the user studies into three broad categories. The behavior studies, the use studies and information flow studies. The behavior studies involve studies to find out the pattern of overall interaction of the user community with the communication system without reference to any specific information receiving event or are called information behavior studies. Second is use studies. Use study, like this category involves studies to find out the use of any communication medium such as primary periodical, 
secondary periodical other sources are called u studies basically this involved study of the various sources of information the pattern the use pattern of the sources of information for example which are the secondary journals which are being used by user popularly being used by user in a particular field of study or what are the other sources which are being used in a particular source uh, field of study next um, category is information flow studies in this category the studies are involved to find the pattern of flow of information in the communication system that is the information is flowed in which hierarchical order whether it is hierarchical order or uh, it is uh, on the same level on what kind of information flows exist in the particular or what are the patterns of flow of information that is studies studied in information flow studies what are the factors that are considered in user study the factors include identification of user group this helps in assessing the proper assessment of use in users information needs next is identification of user approaches and attitudes in finding locating and obtaining the information what are the approaches which are being followed by the users or what are the attitudes which are shown by the users in finding locating and obtaining the information next factor which is studied is orienting the user in finding locating and obtaining the information so user study is just not involved at uh, studying the user it also involves orienting the users to uh, train them in finding locating and obtaining the information another factor is matching the user and his information in such a way that the maximum benefits could be derived from the system reasons for conducting user studies there can be several reasons for which the user studies are conducted some of them are identifying the actual systems and weaknesses of the library resources and services so if we are doing we can conduct user studies to identify the weaknesses of the system and the weaknesses of the library services or resources that exist user studies can are done to identify the levels and kinds of user needs what kind of user needs or what levels of information needs exist in the in the users which are the client of the particular library next the another reason can be could be identifying faculty and student priorities for library information resources and services what kind of resources are more popular what are the priorities of the students or the faculty members while accessing the resources or services next reason is to identify the limitation or problems which seem to discourage the use of the systems what kind of problems the users are facing and the probable solutions could also be judged with the help of user studies another prominent reason to conduct user studies is identifying the level of involvement of user in the system because without as discussed in the beginning of this module the users are the end link so if the users are not involved in the system then the system is of no value so for value addition there should be maximum involvement of the users user studies help in finding what level of involvement exists involvement of users exist in the system and user studies are done to improve the organization and planning of the overall system so finally we can say that the aim of the user study is to develop dynamic interface between the system and the user so students let us summarize what we learned from this module in this module we tried to understand the answers to the following questions who are the users how can we categorize them what are their needs and what is the nature of their needs what are the specific information needs in some areas of human activities 
how the user seek the required information and by depicting what kind of behavior what is the use pattern they exhibit in using the information finally we understood the various aspects of users their categories and nature the concept of information need and types of information needs and more specific information needs in different areas of activities the information seeking behavior of users in order to satisfy the info information needs also the various methods generally known as user studies carried out to find the pattern of overall interaction of users with information retrieval system is also discussed thank you